The most important story facing America today is something that most people aren't talking about. The European Union recently passed a law in 2024 that is going to fundamentally transform the United States of America, force hundreds, perhaps even thousands of companies in the United States to change the way that they do business, to change the kinds of products and services that they're offering, to change the way that they do uh, conduct their employment practices in some cases. And there's nothing in Washington, D.C. that's being done about it. There's nothing at the state level right now that's being done about it. This is a massive story because it's going to impact your life. Now, it might impact your employer. It might impact your job. But even more importantly than that, it's going to impact everything you buy or almost everything you buy. It's going to impact how you transport yourself and your family to and from your job, school, soccer games, everything. Your whole life is about to change as a result of this law in the European Union. And you're not being told the truth about it. My name is Justin Haskins. Uh, before we get into this really incredible and important topic, please take a moment to subscribe to this channel. If you support pro-liberty causes and you want to hear about new and interesting stories, this is the channel for you. It's still a relatively new channel, just getting started. I've been involved in all sorts of important public policy projects. I've written New York Times bestselling books with Glenn Beck. I've been involved in incredible, incredible things throughout my career, but I have never had my own YouTube channel. This is just getting rolling, and it would really help out if you could subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave a comment. All of these things are going to help break through big tech algorithms that hold content like this back. Okay, let's get right to it. This is absolutely stunning story. I published an article recently in foxnews.com talking about this story, and I want to share that article with you and then provide you with even more details than what's in the, uh, in the article on Fox News. So the article is titled, Europe is hell-bent on forcing U.S. companies to go woke, and it has a new law to do just that. Um, in May, officials in the European Union finalized a sweeping new law that will radically change business activities around the world and, by extension, the societies they operate in. The law, formally titled the Corporate Sustainability Due Diligence Directive, I know, it's a mouthful, CSDDD, will not only apply to companies that are based in the European Union, but also to businesses headquartered in other countries that provide products and services in the EU. In other words, it's not a law that only applies to EU businesses. It also applies to big corporations in America and elsewhere. Under the new law, large businesses will be forced to adopt left-wing environmental and social justice rules. In America, we refer to these as environmental, social, and governance, ESG, metrics. But in Europe, they are commonly called due diligence. The law will not only force businesses to adopt Europe's ESG rules within their own operations, but also throughout much of their supply chains, regardless of where the companies in the supply chains are located. That means countless businesses within the United States will be affected by this law. Okay, let's go into uh, some additional details. Um, so this law has been working its way through the books, uh, through the legislative process in the European Union for something like three years. And it looked like it was almost going to die earlier in 2024. And then at the last moment, there was this delegation in Germany that was uh, trying to kill it sort of at the last moment. But then at the last moment, it was saved by a coalition in the EU. They made some, I think, fairly small revisions to the law and it got it over the finish line. And it now is the law of the land in the European Union. So the way this is going to work, um, the law goes into effect fully goes into effect in 2027. I mean, it goes into effect now. Countries have to start writing laws in compliance with this new EU law, the CSDDD law. But those laws don't have to start going into effect till 2027. And it's going to be phased in. So large corporations, large businesses are going to be the ones that are directly 
uh, uh, that have, have these rules directly imposed on them. And then there's a ton of small businesses and medium sized businesses that are going to have the various parts of these rules imposed on them by the larger businesses, not directly by the European Union. So covered companies will be EU based businesses with more than a thousand employees and a net worldwide turnover. Turnover means something, it's similar to revenue. Uh, of more than $489 million, okay? So that's for EU-based companies. Non-EU-based companies, such as a US company, falls under the requirements of the law if they have a net turnover, again, similar to revenue, of more than $489 million within the European Union. So if they do $489 million in revenue, again, it's not exactly the same as revenue, but close to it, within the European Union, then they will have to comply with this ESG these ESG requirements. Um, franchise and licensing agreements, as well as subsidiaries of larger companies, will also fall under this EU law, this EU directive. Okay, so the most important part of the law, though, is to remember that these ESG social credit scoring metrics that are going to apply to these large companies are not just for them. These big companies are going to have to impose these rules on many of the businesses in their supply chains. Okay. So, um, it's, it's going to, it's going uh, to come for thousands of businesses all over the world that do no business in the European union, but they do business with a large co company that does do business in the European union. So, um, for example, let's give you, let's give you an example. Um, McDonald's. McDonald's does is a big corporation. They do $489 million worth of net turnover in the European Union. They're going to not only have to comply with these social credit scoring metrics that are be being imposed by the EU on their own business practices, but they're also going to have to make sure that many of the businesses, not all of them, but many of the businesses in their supply and value chains. Um, so for example, their suppliers of various foods and, um, and, and machinery and things that they use at McDonald's, computer systems, marketing firms, et cetera, all of these different companies that they do business with in order to produce their products or deliver their products or store their products, they're going to have to make sure all those companies are also in compliance with the EU ESG scheme. So McDonald's might have a potato farmer that they, they buy potatoes from in Idaho. I don't, I'm, I'm assuming that this is something that McDonald's does. I haven't looked it up, but let, but I'm pretty sure that they're buying some potatoes from American farmers. Actually, I am positive they're buying potatoes from American farmers. So they're buying potatoes from American farmers. Let's say they're in Idaho. It doesn't matter which state they're in. And um, they don't, that potato farmer does no business in the European Union. So they don't have to direct, they're not directly covered by the EU ESG law, but because McDonald's is required to make sure that all the, com many of the companies that they do business with, not all of them, but many of them that they do business with are in compliance with this EU ESG rule. That means the potato farmer, in order to continue doing business with McDonald's, is most likely going to have to change their business practices so that they're in compliance with the EU ESG system. So it's not going to be handed down by the EU in the case of the small potato farmer. Now, the same would be true for the transportation companies that McDonald's might be working with in America to transport their products all across the country. The same would be true for any warehouses that they're working with. The same might be true for a marketing firm. It might be true for a whole bunch of other kinds of businesses that McDonald's is working with, okay? And um, failure on the part of McDonald's to comply with this, with this law, to impose these EU ESG rules on other companies, well, that is going to lead to massive fines potentially and lawsuits because what the EU ESG system allows for is um for fines to be issued on non-compliant companies of up to 5% of of worldwide turnover or net worldwide turnover so we're talking about in the case of a really big company 
millions and millions and millions, tens of millions of dollars, uh, you know, at, at minimum, right? For, for just one violation, potentially. Plus the law allows for activist groups to sue. Okay, so they can actually sue companies that are not complying with the law. So can individuals. They can bring complaints and force the EU government to act. Each EU country is going to have their own version of this law, and they'll be responsible for imposing the penalties and making sure that the companies operating within their borders, uh, as well as all the companies in those supply chains, are, are, are uh, in compliance. All right. So as I noted in the Fox News article, many of America's largest corporations will be forced to comply with the new EU requirements, which will be phased in over several years, beginning in 2027. For example, Amazon, Apple, Google, Ford, Cargill, McDonald's, and many other U.S. businesses currently have large operations in the European Union that would be that would subject them to the CSDDD's requirements. So this has the potential when you actually start playing this out and, and looking at all of the different ways this could impact the economy, this has the potential to completely transform how business is done in the United States, what kinds of products and services are being offered, um, what kinds of cars you can drive, what kind of energy systems you can use. All of these things are going to be impacted. All of them. Hiring practices, massive, massive, massive changes are coming. What sorts of things are in this EU ESG law? What kinds of things do they, uh, are they going to be imposing on, on people? I think this is a really important thing for us to keep in mind, right? Cause you might be thinking, well, okay, this all sounds bad, but, um, you know, I don't know, maybe everything that's in this EU ESG system is, is fine. Well, the law is over 100 pages long. You can look it up online, CSDDD. You can look that up, find the final text of it. Um, it was approved in, in May of 2024. Um, it's over 100 pages long, and there are some specific metrics listed in the law that says this is the kind of thing that we're going to require for companies. But there's also a ton of of vague references, vague requirements that are going to become specific requirements at some point in the future. And of course, the requirements could change over time. The EU could make more of them or, or they could change some of the existing requirements or they could get rid of some of the requirements. And so this is going to be a shifting problem for companies to, to adjust to. Um, so some of the things that are going to be in it, all covered companies will need to have a climate change transition plan. Uh, all of them are going to have to have prevention action plans related to various uh, policies, ESG policies in the law. So in other words, if you're, you have to, you have to actively be showing as a company that you're trying to be in compliance with the EU ESG law. And if you're not what you're trying to do to phase out of it. Um, you're going to have to establish contractual assurances from a direct business partner that it's going to ensure compliance. That So the potato farmer in Idaho, McDonald's is going to have to go to the potato farmer and make them sign a contract and say, you're doing all of the things that are required by this law, right? And the potato farmer is going to have to sign off if they want to do business with McDonald's. Otherwise, they're going to lose that business. Um, they have to make financial or non-financial investments or upgrades to their business practices in order to be in compliance with the law. There are references to um, eliminating biodiversity, um, uh, to, to sorry, uh, reversing biodiversity in, in the law. It's a requirement for companies. They have to reverse biodiversity. Well, how, how does a company do that? go out and plant trees or something, you know, save the pandas. What, what are they supposed to do to reverse biodiversity loss, right? How, how do you reverse biodiversity loss? That's one of the requirements. Um, there's all sorts of climate change related requirements. There's requirements related to water usage, to land usage. There's requirements related, vague, vague statements about uh, diversity and intersectionality and all kinds of social justice left-wing ID, IDs and ideology. 
Um, so uh, here are some getting even more specific. The Paris Climate Agreement is in this um, is in this ESG EU law. The International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights is mentioned in this law. Um, there are dozens of other uh, agreements and vague statements mentioned throughout the law. Uh, for example, this directive is an important legislative tool to ensure corporate transition to a sustainable economy. Well, that's pretty vague. What does it mean, sustainable economy? Including, but not exclusively, to reduce the existential harms and costs of climate change, to ensure alignment with global net zero by 2050. That means getting rid of the vast majority of your of fossil fuel use by 2050, to avoid any misleading claims regarding such alignment, and to stop greenwashing. That means pretending that you're being environmentally friendly when you're really not being as environmental environmentally friendly as you uh, are leading people to believe. Uh, there's disinformation and fossil fuels expansion worldwide in order to achieve international and European climate objectives. So you're supposed to avoid disinformation and fossil fuels expansion. So avoid disinformation. So just think about, just think about what that means. If you're Apple or you're Google or you're Microsoft and you're supposed to make sure that you and all the businesses in your supply chain and all of your products that you're putting out there into the world are not engaging in disinformation and fossil fuels expansion and promoting fossil fuels expansion worldwide. And that, that whatever is being put out there through your products and services needs to be in alignment with achieving international and European climate objectives. If you're McDonald's, there are things that that's going to have an impact on the economy, on the U.S. economy. Because what about truck drivers? Can truck drivers, can you be driving a diesel powered truck and still be in line with net, going net zero by 2050? No, not ev eventually. No, you have to phase out of it. Right. But when you're talking about Apple and Google and Microsoft, big tech companies, now we're getting into free speech issues because seemingly what this is saying is that a company like Apple, which is one of the biggest podcast hosts in the entire world, this show is on Apple Podcasts, in fact. All, almost every big radio show you can think of, many of them have uh, a podcast version on Apple Podcasts. So uh, under this rule, it seems as though if any of these shows is is engaging in quote unquote disinformation, at least as it pertains to net zero initiatives, environmental initiatives, uh, climate change, et cetera, then at the very least that perhaps more because the wording here is kind of vague and I suppose it could be extended to other things, but at least in those areas, well, then you can't have a show on Apple podcasts. Well, then where are people going to hear you if you can't have a show on Apple podcasts? Because that's how people listen to podcasts if they have an Apple product, right? And if you don't have an Apple product, you probably have a product that's controlled by Microsoft or Google or some other big company that also does a lot of business in the European Union and would have to comply with this rule. Do you see how dangerous this idea is? I want to give you a, a specific example. Um, I've been working with Glenn Beck on this product, on, on this, uh, uh, this issue for a while now. And, um, I, I talked to him about this specific example and I'm pretty sure that in one of his radio shows, he mentioned this on, on the air. This is a really good, just simple example that most people wouldn't think of really clear though, how dangerous all of this can be. Okay. There's a company called bear. B-A-Y-E-R, bear, like bear aspirin, okay? A lot of people have heard of bear aspirin. That's what they think of when they think of the company bear. But bear is actually a lot bigger than just aspirin and pharmaceuticals. Bear is this big German multinational uh, pharmaceutical biotech company. Um, they are still based in Germany. So Germany's in the European Union. They're one of the largest businesses in the world. So they would be covered under the EU's ESG law that's coming out. It does more than $50 billion of business every year. Okay, so it, it, the, the threshold is about $500 million. It does $50 billion. So it's definitely well above the, the threshold. 
over many years, Bear has acquired a whole bunch of companies in a variety of fields. One of them is called Monsanto. Monsanto is one of the has been was historically one of the largest biotech companies in the world. It's originally based in Missouri. It has had a huge presence in the United States. Monsanto owns a company called American Seeds. So now Bear owns American Seeds. All right. American Seeds is the owner, now Bear is the owner, of a whole bunch of other small agricultural companies. Uh, Channel Biocorp is one, Stone Seeds, Gold Country Seed, Inc., Heritage Seed, uh, Heritage Seeds. All of these companies are now part of the Bear empire of companies, which means they all have to be in compliance with the EU's ESG law. It doesn't matter if Heritage Seeds doesn't sell any seeds in the EU. I don't know if it does or not, but it doesn't matter because it's part of Bayer. It's a subsidiary of Bayer and Bayer does do enough business in the EU to be caught up in all of this. So as a result of that, every, the vast majority of people who are doing business with Bayer, who are doing business with these seed companies in America, also has to comply. So not only do all these seed companies and agricultural companies and biotech companies that were part of Monsanto and their subsidiaries, but now all the companies that do business with these subsidiaries. So the transportation company. So you could have a truck driver who owns just a, just a uh, an owner operator truck driver who who transports heritage seeds, uh, and he probably doesn't think this EU ESG law has anything to do with him, except it does because he's going to have to sign a contract at some point and transform his business practices in order to be in alignment with this EU ESG law because he does business with a, a subsidiary of a business covered by the EU ESG law. And when you work out all the, the, the thousands and thousands and thousands of examples and hypotheticals of, how, of who's going to get caught up in this, you can see really clearly, really carefully, uh, really clearly, it's very obvious that the American economy is going to be transformed by this law. Transformed by it. Absolutely transformed by it. And most people have never heard of it. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well, this sounds, this sounds bad, but Maybe, uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's not as uh, as problematic as you're making it seem. Maybe there are, are aspects of this that is is good thing. And you know what? There are actually some good things related to this law. For example, one of the main things this law does is it makes child uh, labor and, um, uh, you know, slave labor and stuff like that it's trying to make that stuff illegal, get it out. It's already illegal, but they're trying to make it so that it's it's out of these supply chains so that you don't have a company that, yeah, they don't hire any uh, eight-year-olds to mine your, uh, you know, rare earth minerals or something, but they do business with another company that does do that. Okay, so in order to stop that practice from happening, they have this, those uh, various provisions in this law that would make that impossible. Now, that's a good thing. But the vast majority of this is not a good thing. The vast majority of this is not a good thing. It's going to transform the entire economy. Just think about the energy system in America. Just think about the energy system in America. How much uh, renewable energy is used in America? Let's We're going to look it up right here on the fly. What is the percentage of renewable energy? Well, according to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, fossil fuels still makes up 60% of all energy in the United States. Nuclear makes up another 18%, almost 19%. I bet you didn't know that. <laughs> Nuclear actually is a huge generator of, of, uh, of energy in the United States. This is utility scale uh, electricity generation, by the way, so not all energy. But so fossil fuels, we're talking about just electricity generation, 60%. Nuclear, 18.6%. So between the two of those, almost 80%. Renewables, 
Wind, 10%. Hydro, 5.7, but that's only in certain parts of the country, obviously. Solar, again, 3.9, but that's mostly concentrated in certain parts of the country where there's a lot of sun and stuff like that. So the vast majority is coming from fossil fuels still and nuclear. It's not coming from renewable energy. But now the EU is saying you can't use fossil fuels. You got to phase all this stuff out. So the potato farmer has to find a way to, to farm potatoes without using fossil fuels. All because of what? An American law? No. No. A, a law that was passed by his representatives in Idaho? No. In Congress? No. By a, 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 an executive order from the president? No. By who? By the European Union. Right? So, again, I'm using a lot of specific examples, but you got to play this scenario out in your mind. It's about big tech companies. It's about software companies. It's about um, these massive corporations that have their tentacles in 50 million different kinds of businesses that you would never even think about, like waste management disposal and stuff like that. All of these businesses are going to be impacted and all the businesses that they, many of the businesses, I should say, not all of them, that they work with will be impacted. There are some exceptions for companies that won't be impacted by this or not as directly impacted. For example, one of the more controversial carve outs in the, in the law is financial institutions don't necessarily have to make sure that the people that they for example, lend money to and other financial services, give other financial services to. They don't necessarily have to make sure that those businesses are in compliance with these ESG rules. Um, that was something that they talked about putting in the law, which would have really been absolutely catastrophic, but they decided to pull it out at the last minute. So financial services and... Um, uh, banks and those those kinds of companies, they still do have to comply with parts of this law, but not as much as other kinds of industries, most other kinds of industries. So why is it that we're not hearing about this from anyone? Why is it that that you're hearing about this from somebody like me and you're not hearing about this from someone, <laughs> you know, running for president or something? Well, to be totally honest with you, I think the main reason is I just don't think most people have heard of it. Um, I've talked to some really influential, powerful people who have spoken to people who are in Congress and, and elsewhere, and it's just nobody knows this. Even though this has been proposed for years, nobody has paying attention to what's going on in Europe. And I don't think that people would assume that a law could be passed in Europe that governs how Coca-Cola operates and that that might have some impact on a truck driver in Kansas or Oregon or wherever, New York. Like, I just don't think, you know, Texas, I don't think people think that way, but that is how the law was very specifically and deliberately designed so that it would impact the entire world. And it's not just about America. This is going to impact business all over the planet. It's going to impact how things are done in Mexico, how things are done in uh, Africa maybe china it is a it is a big question um how is this all going to work with china because china is obviously a massive supplier to the european union the european union can't survive without chinese products but um the idea that china is going to suddenly go woke and be in compliance with everything that the european union wants seems wildly unrealistic doesn't it so how is this going to work are they just going to give China a pass? Oh, well, that was a question that I asked myself for a long time. And I thought maybe they would just look the other way when it comes to China. And I suppose it's possible that that's the way that this is going to work. But recently, and I have not done, uh, so I haven't done a full, uh, my, my usual real big deep dive into this particular aspect of the law. So I could have this wrong. I'm going to say that right up front, but I think I don't. I think I've got this right. I feel like 80% sure. There is this provision in the EU ESG law that would force companies in cases where their 
uh, imposition of these EU ESG rules is going to uh, cause significant harm and possibly destroy a business that they're working with. That they, the company that's imposing the rules on behalf of the EU, or because of the EU, I should say, that they are going to have to pay for these companies to transition to whatever, to be in compliance with the EU ESG rules. So for example, maybe there is a factory in Mexico or Africa that sell, that's part of the, the supply chain for a big EU brand that's covered by this law. And the, this company goes to this uh, factory in Africa and says, you need to change these five things about your business. Otherwise, we can't do business with you anymore because you're, in, you're not going to be in compliance with this new EU ESG law. And the factory says, if we do these five things, we're going to go bankrupt. We can't. We're going to go under. We're going to close our doors. We're not going to be able to function. So we can't do these things. It seems to me that what this law is, is saying is companies are going to be forced the EU company in this case would be forced to pay for the factory in Africa or in Mexico or wherever to transform its business so that it's in compliance. So if you take that idea and you say, well, maybe China and those companies are going to make the same argument. Hey, if you do this to us, our companies are going to be destroyed. And so they're going to have to transform. We're going to have to pay. Western companies are going to have to pay for the transformation of Chinese businesses. It could be a massive wealth transfer from America to China, to Africa, to South America and Central America. That it seems to be part of this law. Now, if that's true, that would be arguably the biggest wealth transfer in history, from the, at least from the American perspective. This is a huge huge, huge wealth transfer that we're talking about. If this is the way that the law actually works. And, you know, again, we're not, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but this is stunning. At the very least, we're talking about the complete transformation of our energy systems, complete transformation of the way our economies work, complete transformation about who is in charge of making these decisions. This is a direct assault on the sovereignty of the United States of America, as well as every other country in the world that isn't in the European Union and has no say in this. It is egregious. Think about the UK. Think about England, right? They left the European Union, Brexit, so that they wouldn't have to be beholden to all these kinds of rules. And now they're going to have all these rules imposed on them again. This, or for the first time, this is just absolutely stunning. And more people need to know about it. So please take a moment. It costs no money at all just a little bit of your time, take a moment to leave a comment, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and most importantly, share this video with friends and family so that they can see for themselves. Share the article that will be linked in the show notes on the YouTube channel version of this, as well as the podcast uh, version of the show, which is available on a whole bunch of different platforms where you can, you know, Apple and Spotify, I believe, and things like that. You'll have a link to the Fox News article Share that, share that because people need to see what's going on here. This is a massive, massive story. Okay, that's all we have for today's show. Until next time, my name is Justin Haskins. Stay free.